Hi, Lidra. All right, so we're good? Your, your life. Hey, so welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Today is a great day in our community, a day where we're, we, we see hope, we see optimism. We are reopening our parks here in the town of Miami Lakes, our three major parks, which is Miami Lakes Optimus, uh, Royal Oaks Park, and Picnic Park West. And that's why you see these folks joining me today. Uh, you have two of my colleagues that are great believers in our park system and what they do for our community, Councilman Luis Collazo, Councilman Josh Diegas. We have our town manager, Ed Peterman. You have our deputy town attorney, Lorenzo Covilla, our parks director, uh, back there, Danny Angel, uh, our deputy town manager, Tony Lopez, and we have our police major, Javier Ruiz. We're all here today because today is a really, really great day in our community. Hoy un día increíble para nuestra comunidad, para porque los parques se están reabriendo aquí en la ciudad de Miami Lakes, los tres parques más grandes. Y yo pienso que eso parte de de, de darle un chance a la, a la comunidad de venir juntos y, y saber que ya estamos llegando a un punto donde vamos a empezar viviendo la vida normal otra la vez. Esto, esto hoy es bien importante. So I'm going to hand it over to our town manager to go into detail on the executive order and what we expect uh, from our residents coming into our parks. But we do want to thank our residents for working with us because we flattened the curve. I can't say countywide, but we flattened the curve specifically here in the town of Miami Lakes because of you all, and this is a way that we start getting back to normal. Mr. Manager? Let's get your name, spell it for your position, please. Edward Peterman, P-I-D-E-R-M-A-N-N. -N. Town Manager, Town of Miami Lakes. I wanted to start off by letting everyone know that we currently still have only 43 confirmed cases in the town of Miami Lakes. The, this is the fifth consecutive day with no change in that number. We've had no new cases in five days. In addition, we've gone the past 13 days with only two new cases. At the height of the curve of the coronavirus, we were experiencing one to two new cases every day. We've now recently seen that we're only having one to two new cases every week. So that's an incredible uh, change, it's great news, and it's a testament to how serious Miami Lakers have taken the guidance of the CDC and other medical professionals in adhering to the facial coverings and social distancing. As most of you may have heard already, we're reopening today our parks, waterways, and golf courses on a limited basis, that's important, on a limited basis. Our large parks will open from sunrise to sunset, and that started today. Our neighborhood pocket parks and youth centers shall remain closed for this first phase of our reopening. No large groups will be allowed to gather. Social distancing will be strictly enforced. Allowed activities shall be walking, jogging, cycling, sports skills practice, like dribbling a soccer ball, uh, father and son throwing a football, throwing a baseball, that type of thing. No organized competitive play except singles tennis courts. There'll be no table games, picnics, no parties, no portable furniture, no picnic tables, no tents, no grills, no bike racks, no basketball courts. And that's important. The basketball courts is something that Miami Lakes differs from the Miami-Dade County order. We, Miami-Dade allowed basketball court with some limitations. We are keeping them closed for this first phase. Athletic, athletic fields shall be closed except for the uh, sports skills practice. Playground and exercise stations shall be closed. Our doggy park, Canine Cove, shall be uh, kept closed. Indoor facilities at the park shall be closed and pavilions shall continue to be closed. Trails and walkways, as you see the one that we're standing on, will be one directional. So the flow of people walking will be all in one, the same direction. Restrooms will be closed, but they'll have attendance and they'll daily and constantly be cleaned and disinfected. Police and park staff shall ensure compliance with this order. We have repurposed and uh, our school crossing guards to work with the park staff and the uh, law enforcement to help in the enforcement efforts at our parks. Our parking lot capacities may from time to time be limited to ensure that social distancing is adhered to. Now Miami Lakes uh, differs primarily from Miami-Dade County in the following orders, in the following ways. 
Miami-Dade County listed their open and closed times from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. We did it from sunrise to sunset. We thought that it complies and it adheres to the spirit of the Miami-Dade County order, but it makes it easier for our residents uh, to comply. We are prohibiting basketball courts to reopen at this phase. And our, uh, our, our parking lot, uh, we're gonna be more flexible with our parking lots. Miami-Dade County uh, was restricting the county parks uh, to only 25 capacity, 25% capacity. We're gonna just play it by ear and see how it goes. And as long as people are adhering to social distancing, we're gonna be okay with that. As for waterways, as the one that you see here next to us, boats, including watercrafts, in other words, personal watercrafts, in other words, jet skis, they must remain 50 feet apart from each other. Rafting or tying up vessels together is gonna to be prohibited. As for golf courses, uh, our golf course here in Miami Lakes uh, was reopened this morning. Staff and players shall practice social distancing. They shall wear facial coverings uh, when, when any time that they're indoors. Clubs and equipment shall not be carried by golf course staff. The players have to carry their own clubs. No indoor events. Pro shops shall remain closed except for goods and supplies may be purchased from the pro shop but at the door. Uh, locker rooms and back storage facilities shall remain closed. Restrooms shall be one person or one family at a time. Each cart must be cleaned and disinfected prior to each use. The driving range is allowed, but everyone needs to be 10 feet apart from each other. The cups at every hole shall be modified to prevent the ball from going into the cup. Players shall not touch the flag stick, uh, flag stick I'm sorry, only one player per golf cart. Beverage carts will be permitted with certain restrictions. Now I'd like to conclude by recognizing all the people that have made the coronavirus recovery possible. Please join me in thanking and congratulating our healthcare workers, first responders, and more importantly, their families that have sacrificed so much for all of us to stay safe. I would also like to remind all Miami Lakers that the only reason that we now see a glimmer of hope and light at the end of the tunnel is because all of the hard work and sacrifice that our residents have made adhering to CDC guidance, including the closure of so many small Miami Lakes businesses. What I can tell you is that the end is slowly approaching. However, we cannot let our guard down too soon. We do not want a second spike in this curve, and that has been seen with other pandemics and other epidemics. So we want to avoid that. We don't want to see a resurgence, a resurgence of the COVID-19. Please keep doing what we're doing, and soon we'll even see more loosening of the stranglehold that this virus has had on our lives. I'm a glasses half full kind of guy. The light that we see at the end of the tunnel is not a freight train. Don't worry. It is sunshine. So please continue to adhere to the medical guidance, and we will get through this. Thank you, Mr. Manager, Mr. Mayor. Um, this is Councilman Diegas, Miami Lakers. I just wanted to briefly reiterate what the manager said, which is we are here today because of your hard effort and sacrifice in adhering to all the guidelines that have been uh, put forward over the last couple of uh, weeks. And we, uh, as we continue to slowly reopen our uh, community, it's important that you continue to adhere to those guidelines to ensure that we don't have that second outbreak that the manager just mentioned. We're all in this together and it's important that we all do our part to ensure that we don't end up back in square one doing all this all over again. The last thing I want to say is that even though we are in lockdown, it's important that you please take time to complete the census, which is ongoing and will continue through August. I cannot overstate how important it is to our community. Billions of dollars are distributed every single year as a result of census data that is collected through this decennial census. It's quick. It only took me about five and a half minutes. The information is confidential for 72 years. And again, it does your part to make sure that we get our fair share of both political representation and community resources for our seniors especially. So please take the time to do it. You can uh, complete it online. You can do it by phone with a uh, sworn census worker, and you can also do it by mail. All you need is your 12 digit ID, which you can, if you've lost it, you can easily recover it. So please get it done. We're currently doing well relative to our other sister communities. As of last night, I believe we were at 60% uh, completed. 
and we're trying to get to 85% uh, this year for this count. That would be one of the highest um, communities ever. So thank you very much, and please do your part with the census and do your part with the CDC guidelines. Thank you. Your name, your name please? Joshua Dieguez. Last name is D-I-E-G-U-E-Z. And you are? I'm part of me? Council. 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 Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Luis Coyasso. I'm a council member as well for the town of Miami Lakes. I do want to put a point of emphasis that this is sunlight uh, at the end of a very dark tunnel and it is progress moving forward, but we're actually opening up our parks. But and I want to reemphasize the same point that everybody else has made. We need to continue to adhere to the CDC guidelines on social distancing and face covering. We want to make sure that we're doing our part so there are no, there is no second spike. Furthermore, we've also seen an overwhelming need in our community to make sure that we're getting the most vulnerable people the help that they need. Royal Oaks Park is not going to be a field distribution site this Friday for Farm Share. That site has been moved to Amelia Earhart Park, but we plan to resume using Royal Oaks Park the following week on Friday with Feeding South Florida. So that's a very important message. As many people have been coming to Royal Oaks Park on a weekly basis, that will not happen this Friday. It, instead, it will happen on Saturday at the Miami Lakes Methodist Church. Um, and there will be more information on our social media channels with respect to next Friday's feeding. So thank you so much, Miami Lakers. We have done a great job in flattening that curve, but we want to make sure that we continue to do our part. But we'll be more than happy to take some questions. I know one of the first questions that we had gotten was in regards to the basketball courts, why uh, we kept them closed. I know the main courts here, uh, and Mr. Manning, you can chime in, the main courts that we have here that are the largest ones, the ones that you probably can practice social distancing aren't owned by the town. They're actually owned by the school district, uh, which are the courts over here. The courts that we own are half courts at our, at our parks, very small half courts with only one hoop. I'm a basketball player. courts uh, would reopen but that is just the reality with the guidelines that the CDC is providing that the experts are providing it is almost impossible on half courts with only one hoop to practice uh, social distancing so I, I just wanted to talk about that because that was one of the questions I don't know if there's any other ones but we're more than happy to take some from uh, from the press if you guys have uh, have any my only question would be about enforcement I know you guys mentioned school crossing guards but what is that enforcement going to look like and what are the potential consequences for people who don't follow those rules uh, to start off with, and I'll hand it over to our town manager to talk about it more, but it's the reality is educational, right? We're not here to, to, to find folks, to, to arrest people. The first phase for us is education. The same thing happened when we had the 10-day the curfew. Our goal was never to, to go out there and enforce this, you know, in, in terms of arresting folks or, or whatnot. It's to work with people. Our residents are amazing people. Just by talking to them, by, by spreading the, this information via the press, our residents on their own, uh, know what's right, know what's going on. We've had over a month and a half of practice, right? Everybody knows you got to wear the proper PPE. Everybody knows what needs to happen when we go out, out and about. In español, para pa decirlo, se lo pa, voy a pasar al administrador ahora. Eh, cuando alguien viene al parque, ya tenemos más que un mes y medio de todo el mundo practicando, teniendo, cubriéndose la cara, cubriéndose la boca. So, yo creo que los residentes de nuestra comunidad, de Miami Lakes, están haciendo un increíble trabajo sobre eso. So, ellos saben, cuando vienen al parque, van a ver policía aquí, van a ver los crossing guards, van a ver lo, lo, el equipo, los otros, los parques. Pero en realidad, nosotros no estamos aquí para darle una multa a alguien o algo así. We're here, estamos aquí para educar, para hablar, para trabajar juntos. Y eso es lo que los, nuestros residentes están haciendo. So, that, I'm going to pass it over to our administrator now so we can talk about you know, if somebody were not to uh, uh, say, hey, you know what, I don't have to, you know, practice social distancing, what would happen? We'll talk about that. Yeah, we have uh, three lines of defense for enforcement. Uh, we have our police officers, which the men and women for, from the Miami-Dade Police Department that uh, work here and dedicated here to the town of Miami Lakes under the guidance of our commander, Major Ruiz, have done an incredible job. They've been our enforcement arm for, for this whole event for the past six to eight weeks. They've done an incredible job. They've done it without a heavy hand. They've done it in cooperation with our residents. Our, like the mayor said, our residents have been incredible and they've taken to heart the advice and the orders that we've issued and they understand that it's for all of our good. 
in the uh, parks with the re with the limitations that we have in the parks. We have our police officers that will have a presence in all of our parks. We have our park staff, which is uh, now going to be uh, uh, making sure that everybody adheres to the limitations, unfortunately, that we have. And we also have the repurposing of our school crossing guards. So we have all three elements that will help in our enforcement efforts uh, for this uh, new first phase of reopening of our parks. I'm good. Yeah. Oye, ¿me puede decir en español los parques que van a estar abiertos, por favor? El parque Miami Lake, el parque aquí, el parque Park West, que es el parque de la 87 avenida aquí en la ciudad, que se llena de personas todos los días caminando. So, estoy seguro que hoy mismo eso va a estar completamente lleno. Y el parque Royal Oaks Park, que es el parque más grande de balompié, de soccer, del noroeste del condado también, que va a reabrir, eh, eh, va a reabrir hoy. So, esos son los tres parques. Aquí en nuestra comunidad tenemos más que 100 parques. Eh, los otros parques, que son 90 y pico parques, no se van a reabrir en este momento porque son los parques más pequeños que tienen... Eh, que tienen eh, diferentes actividades y eso, so, en este momento eso no se van a abrir, eso está bajo de la orden del condado, que no se pueden abrir, eh, pero eso va a ser la segunda fase para reabrir todos 100 parques aquí en nuestra comunidad. Hoy, nada más que los tres parques más grandes se están reabriendo, pero ya para la segunda fase, ojalá que los otros 97, 90 y pico parques eh, ya se, se, se reabrir, porque esos son los parques que están cerca de las casas de, de nuestros residentes. ¿Qué llevó al alcalde a abrir los parques? Tomar la decisión de bueno, la, el alcalde de condado, cuando impuso su orden a cerrar todos los parques, eh, en, en, en quería trabajar, yo sé que el equipo solo estaba trabajando con él y había residentes de los otros trabajando con él. Él estaba trabajando con los doctores y los científicos de la Universidad de Miami y de Jackson para ver qué son las regulaciones. Pues cuando a los otros, al equipo de los otros, reabrí, cuando él nos dio chance hoy por la mañana, eh, 100%, nosotros somos una de las primeras ciudades a decir, oye, estamos, estamos con ustedes, vamos a reabrir, porque sabemos la importancia de los parques para nuestros residentes. Específicamente, en un momento, nosotros siempre, yo hablo siempre con el Consejo Collazo de la salud mental y cómo ayudar a los, los residentes, en un momento tan difícil, lo que representa reabrir un parque para los residentes y tener la oportunidad de, de entrar es algo increíble. Eso para nosotros es sentido común reabrir esto hoy cuando tuvimos la, la, la oportunidad porque sabemos que las regulaciones que estamos poniendo hoy ya los doctores ya todo el mundo ha dicho que están en, en acuerdo con eso de nosotros de Miami Lakes tenemos todas las regulaciones en Miami Lakes .gov raya eh, park rules ahí están todas las regulaciones Miami Lakers all of our rules are listed on our website uh, the, for this first phase of the reopening at Miami Lakes .gov I'm sorry Miami Lakes dash fl .gov forward slash Park rules. You can go right there and even on our homepage, if you're used to going to Miami Lakes website, on our homepage you'll be able to find a link there and that, so all of the rules uh, that are restricting the use and uh, allowing use of this first phase of the reopening are listed there on our website. Sí. No, tranquilo. Usted como manager, ¿qué, qué opina de la opinión de, de abrir los parques? ¿Se reunieron los con el comisionado, con, con el alcalde? Sí, no, nosotros, eh, los parques es una gran parte de la vida de nosotros los residentes de Miami Lakes. Como el alcalde dijo, nosotros en Miami Lakes tenemos casi 100 parques 
la mayoría son parques pequeños en los vecindarios de Miami Lakes. Esos parques en esta primera fase de la reapertura de los parques se van a mantener cerrados. Esperamos que en la segunda fase ya se pueden abrir. Son los parques que van a abrir son los tres grandes en uh, Miami Lakes, Optimus Park en donde estamos, donde juegan pelota, en uh, Royal Oaks Park donde los niños juegan uh, fútbol americano y baloncesto y también Picnic Park West que está en el lado oeste de la, ciudad, de, de la ciudad. Esos tres parques grandes son los que se van a abrir para actividades eh, pasivas, caminando, hacer jogging, ese tipo de cosas. No se pueden reunir la gente en grupos grandes, se tienen que mantener la, de, 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 el distanciamiento social y cuando pueden mantenerse la, la cara tapada, a menos que sea un ejercicio como jogging que es más eh, extenso, entonces que es casi imposible tener la cara cubierta. Una pregunta, ¿qué hay de los restaurantes? ¿Seguimos con la misma metódica, el mismo método anterior para llevar nada más o hay algo nuevo? Sí, eso también, yo sé que el, a, al nivel con, del condado han esta, establecido eh, grupos que fueron los que nos dieron este tipo, esta primera fase de, de volver a abrir los parques y los campos de golf y eso. Esos grupos trabajando trabajaron extensamente y, y súper rápido. Yo creo que sacaron las recomendaciones en un, una o dos semanas o menos. Y ya han establecido al nivel eh, del condado con participantes de aquí de Miami Lakes. Eh, ya esos grupos están empezando a hablar y establecer planes para la primera fase de la reapertura de negocios, que es muy importante. So, yo espero que ya dentro de una o dos semanas ya se vea por lo menos el plan esté eh, listo para publicar de la reapertura de negocios eh, con, obviamente igual que hicimos aquí en los parques con límites pero ya espero en las próximas dos semanas poder anunciar que los negocios aquí en Miami Lakes y en todo el condado se van a volver a poder abrir Gracias y suerte